Welcome to another episode of Conversation and Cocktails with your host, me, Lenny B. In this episode, we talk to Alec Friedman. Alec is a neighborhood friend from Yorkville, as well as the singer for Without a Cause. Uh, we sat down, spoke about music, drug addiction, and life in general and where he's at. So, without any further ado, hold that fucking footage. Man. What's going on, man? What's going on, bro, man? It's Same shit. Long. Same shit. So, fucking, we're sitting here in Carl Schultz. We both grew up uh, a few blocks away from here. And I gotta say, it's it's kind of weird being back at this park. You know, it really is. You know, because this is this has changed. It's, Holy shit, this it's, changed. it's changed big time, man. You know, and uh, you know, let, it, all my memories of this place when we were kids. You know, yeah. it was kind of like an adventure coming down here. If it wasn't coming down to play hockey, we were like coming down to sneak into John J. Crumb through to sneak into John J. Poole. Oh yeah. You know. Or, uh, I remember I got the first time I got like mugged actually was in this park. Oh sure. I got fucking I got my bike stolen from me like right outside the playground over here. Oh man. <laughs> I was like See eleven. Yeah. You know, I was like like holy shit, you know, this is really happening to me. This is fucked up. That, I, 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 that's, that was like a rite of passage back then. I think everyone got My first got bike some... stolen at ten. Yeah. Right in the Batman park, right? You know. Yeah, that that's terrible. Right in the building. That's terrible. So fucking when it comes down to it, like we uh we all kind of got into this heavy music, I'd say, roughly around the same time. What was your, like, introduction to getting into, like... Because, I mean, everyone, you know, everyone was a metalhead first. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Like, like, very, like, very, like Richie O'Brien says, uh, every, every hardcore kid was a metalhead. Yeah, Still yeah. Hardcore. I mean, what, how did you how did you get into it? I had to say Brendan McDonough, you know, uh, going over to see Liam and Brendan oh, yeah. terrorizing us and uh, <laughs> turning us on to... Uh, Turning this on to like, you know, again, uh, hardcore. I remember the Maximum Penalty demo was the first, I would say, hardcore demo I ever heard, you know? Yeah. And then just metal in general, you know? It turned me on to. So I'd say it was just, you know, like people like Brendan, man, that really, Brendan, uh, Teddy Bowen, you know, that whole 94th Street crew. Yeah. Kind of got me into it, you know. Then of course Dennis Young, may rest in peace. You know him turned me on to Ozzy. Oh yeah. You know it'd be great back then because you'd have you'd have Dennis wailing the guitar with the window open, trying to play Iron Man very uh, badly. Badly. <laughs> you'd have Tommy Carroll at the time trying to learn the straight ahead stuff. Not, uh, I mean uh, the, New York Mayhem. Today, you know, you, at the, no, it was Mayhem. Earlier. It was New York Mayhem at that time. It was okay. New York Mayhem. Doing the New York Mayhem stuff on his on his drums, you know. Then you had Ruben Sadamai at night playing his drums, you know. Yeah, he would like... drums outside on the back of the of the projects. Yeah. you know, I remember that. Him and his, it was a him and Hugo, I think. Yes, Hugo. Yeah, Hugo, I think played guitar. guitar yes. Really I, I mean, we had. He we was had, a good drummer, actually. Man. But it's funny because we had a lot of people from like our neck of the woods, kind of like playing music at some point. You know, yes. then we had like, you know, you had the, uh, you had Pete Harbor, of course. Then you had, oh man. The then you had his brother Save also, uh, Jim, I think it was. Yeah. You had Jim Harbor playing. Then you had the. Danny Doody, I think? Danny Doody, yeah. Danny Doody used Danny to play Danny. fucking instruments. So, I mean, where and we grow up, I mean, there was a lot. And Brendan was a potential star singing, man. Like, he could have been oh, one yeah, of no, the it's... great Harvard singers. I remember they wanted him for Marauder when Minus first left. Rick had reached out to him, you yeah. know? But uh, Brendan just... Well, Brendan's reason, Brendan. Brendan's Brendan, exactly. Yeah, Brendan's Brendan, unfortunately. Yeah. You know, but I just... Like I said, we grew up with a lot of people in our, like, neighborhood just... Playing music and you kind of got like you kind of got like not only say forced into it but it definitely perked an interest oh, because it did. Uh, because I remember there was a time when I guess got a bass yeah I did actually when I was a metalhead man when I, I he had the perm but I ain't gonna talk because I had yeah. a fucked up haircut too I'm not gonna talk because I had a fucked up haircut too man I I, I had fucking business up front and party in the back yeah yeah we you know did, we all did it in that days and you know it's funny man speaking of the bass. I got that bass a week before I accidentally went to my first hardcore show. Really? It all happened by accident. I, my first time out to Lemoore's, and uh, me and my my friend, and I'm with St. Stevens with Mike Mendel. Oh, yeah, I'm Mike. Mike, yeah, Mike yeah. played guitar, played a Gibson SG, that's why I fell in love with the SG sound. 
But uh, he was like, let's go check out this band TSOL, and there's this band Leeway opening up. So we go in, yeah. and uh, the setup was weird that night. It was like they had the main stage, and then Leeway wasn't even playing on the stage that night. It was almost like they had a second stage set up. It was yeah. a weird setup that night. But I just remember walking in during Leeway's set, and it was just like, wow. It just blew me back. It was like, you know, there was Eddie, like, a, like you know, one of the, like, a, the Beastie Boys, but, like, as like, real as you're going to get. Yeah. And AJ with that. Oh, oh man, yeah, with that, that Martian Crunch with the SG. Oh man, you had Zoe on bass back then, and you know, the original drummer. It was just, it was just, a, it was amazing, you know. Oh, so you got okay. to see, you got to see the, uh, you got to see the Born Next Fire lineup. I got to see the Born Next Fire lineup, lineup. Yeah. exactly. You know, and then it didn't come back around. It, I didn't come back around two years later until we all got together. Yeah, and then we started venturing out. You know. But I think we were like, like you said, there was a lot of different people as we were growing up that played instruments. Yeah. And I think we were like the first crew, like around the same, with the same age group that really got together and formed and organized. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, I think, I think guys would jam very loosely together. Yes. And, you know, when, you know, I mean, when we really first started, we started as misguided youth and we had Yo, Brian Roman. We had Brian Roman on drums and then that that kind of morphed into it because originally that was with Eric Sharkey Eric, right? well Eric Sharkey originally for that one was playing guitar Jeff Morris was playing bass Ace, yes. and then during when it turned out without a cause we flipped that around uh -huh. you know and Eric wound up playing bass and and Jeff you know as burnt out as Jeff was, you know, he's, yeah, he was, you know, I mean, I mean, I'm pretty sure he's still burnt out. <laughs> yeah, but still made, still made. Yeah, man. I mean, he, the guy can play a lot of different instruments. I, I'll give him that much. I love this Gallon Kruger sound. Yeah, you that, know? you know, he, uh, he, was, he was more like it, it's like that, uh, it's an Ignate Valstein. Oh, well, yeah, he, you know. he was more of like a shredder type of exactly, dude, you know, exactly. like, he more was into fucking a lot of solos and, and, and whatever. Yeah, like if he was a kid, like if he was a kid today, he would probably be playing like death metal, like that quick. Yeah. Shredding death. Yeah, he Norwegian was... type death metal. With yeah, the blonde hair it... going up and down. Definitely see that. Yeah, because that all I remember like how that the how that all started because we used to go to parties up at Eric's place. Yes. Okay. And one day I think it and you know guys would just kind of like fuck around or make up songs or whatever and eventually we all wound up going to a. Uh, I think we just booked it like one day went to Giant Studios and we yes. there was there was no real intention of anything people brought in shit in the bass drum. Um, Remember that? Yeah. <laughs> we um we went to Giant, booked like two or three hours and everyone just kinda like made noise. And yeah. out of that it was like, all right, well let's let's get a little more serious. Exactly. You know, and then and then you know when Pete Harbor played for us oh, man. I mean cool. he really he really brought like <laughs> he brought the song our songs were kind of like here, 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 here. Yeah. Pete was like, I'm, yeah, Pete brought it right into place. He's like, all right, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. He made us tighter. Yes. You know, and that, and Pete only was with us for about, like, maybe less than six months. Cause he I had know, to be, but it seems like so much longer when it, I think back, because so much was learned during oh, that period. Totally. Well, we did a lot, here's the thing, when we had Pete Harbor in the band, Pete's a fantastic drummer in his own right, and he had played in a metal band called Cursed Earth. Yeah. And with the uh, Rick from Mar Marauder, mm -hmm. um, and so he had some, you know, he had the experience, he had the knowledge. We only wound up doing three shows with people. Wow, really? Yeah, don't you we only wound up doing three crazy. shows with people. But I remember and then recording. Yeah, but we did a lot of recording with people. We used to go down to Don Fury's to do two track lives, and yeah. there's probably like, we probably went there like three or four different times with people, just like. Like constantly, like improving songs, improving songs, yeah. improving songs, like getting rid of a lot of the dead weight because, you know, when Pete left, we had that one metal dude Jose who played for like a show, oh, yeah. with us, yeah. and then then we got Ray Maloon, and yeah. and Ray, I actually found Ray Maloon through an old classmate of mine, you know, was bullshit on the phone with someone I knew, and they were like, I know a drummer, and I was like, okay, what's you know, hook me up with a number. Called him up, he came down, and you know the rest was history as far as I was concerned. Yeah, I love Ray. And, and you know around the same time, you know we also wound up scooping up like Dave Mitchell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, did, I did. we got Dave through Anita, right? I, uh, yeah, I think yeah. it was uh, Anita has. It was like, oh, I know a bass player, and you know, and you know, Dave was another one of those guys, kind of like 
because we only we didn't really know what we were doing as far as booking shows or no. we kind of and that's what made it that's what made it hardcore you know like we were like a like we were a hardcore band man we were just like like the fucking kids dead end kids <laughs> yeah exactly that's what we were like, we're like, like the dead fucking end dead end kids dude yeah. because it was like bunch of we didn't know we the jam together yeah, we didn't know we didn't know a fucking thing we were doing at that time no it no, was just no. like it was how like, you didn't go gray at that point I don't know uh, uh, <laughs> It was, yeah, it was, you pulling everything together, it was, organizing, it was, and it's like. Yeah, but Dave, Dave really came in, and he helped. You know, he really kind of. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? You know, he he had a little more more experience with his old band, and you know, I guess brought that to the table. And I just remember playing like every fucking like shithole imaginable oh man you know man, I, I mean uh, remember, the, remember the first show going back to the misguided you with downtown beirut right yeah. wasn't it the first one with the day tent went on fire the pa the pa went on fire yeah, we, yeah. we basically brought my stereo system as yeah. the pa because they were like oh we don't have a pa you have to bring one and on and honestly at the time you know i didn't know really shit about no, booking shows man. or i would have never took that show you know yeah 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 we exactly just, with no pa you know, because at the time we were more about like, well, we gotta get the, you know, we gotta get a show. We, you know, how do we get a show? We got out there early, which was really good. You know what I mean? I mean, and, and I get, I get a lot of credit to you for that. Because well, you got we got busy. You know what I mean? And we, we learned, we learned on the fly. fly. Yeah. Yeah, we learned on there the was fly. No, there was really nobody. You know, we didn't have a lot of connections in the hardcore scene at the time, and no. and so it was really like, yeah. you made it up as you went. Exactly. And it, it was. Those early days were real fucking rough because you were, you know, we played a lot of random fucker places in the early Shit, days. Yeah. It really wasn't until like I'd say like ninety, end of ninety two. Really wasn't until we got Frank Collins around. Yeah, you know oh, that Frankie. Fra you know, rest in peace, Frank. Yeah, rest um, in peace. The oh, Fra man. When we got Frank Collins in the band. Fra Frank was only with us for a couple of shows. But we, but we, he was so tight with us. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, he fit, he that, fit right in. He fit right in. That's another thing that seemed so much longer because he was hanging with us for so long. You know what I mean? I mean, I remember, I remember me and you and Frank hanging at the NYU dorms, man. Yeah. Oh yeah, I, I, I thought yeah. about that the other day. I was like, yeah, there's gonna be some stories. Um, yeah. We used to, we used to, I'll, I'll tell the story. Oh, fuck, yeah. I got nothing yeah. to lose. Yeah, we used to basically go down to NYU and for like a week. There was a week there. Every day we went back down to the village, went back down to the village, mm -hmm. and we would scam on, on, the coeds basically. Get yeah. into the dorm. Which which Liz Busy got a foot in the door down there. Yeah. Yeah. But there were other times there just went. You know, able to scan through other exactly avenues, through other avenues, exactly. You know, and you know, you'd want you know you wind up doing dirty shit. Oh yeah, like uh, my, my version of just spin the bottle with the uh, twenty thousand dollar worth of water damage and with uh, oh yeah Frankie well, and the Filipino girl so yeah. broke out the wall and it just flooded the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, and then and then other guy you know then the other guys you're like oh look she's got travel checks in her fucking yeah. <laughs> <laughs> travel checks or, or pick it up. Random girls are bringing them back to my my yeah. parents' house when they were when they were away on a trip. Oh uh, yeah, I yeah. Did, there was I'll, I'll tell this story. There was this one. There were a couple of girls that these guys picked up over by Tower Records. Okay. And it went up bringing them back to my parents' place. My, my you know my parents were away for the week or whatever. And I just remember you know everyone falls asleep whatever. We go and. Um, you know, I wake up the next morning, Frank Collins has this look on his face like, help, help. <laughs> you know what I'm like, help. I was like, I was like oh, you want her out of here. Right. So I, I'm like, all right, how am I going to kick this girl out of the fucking house? You know, without just saying, hey, you got to go. Dude, she's a whore. Yeah. She's a whore with that Brooklyn accent. <laughs> yeah, she was. And um, I wound up actually getting my dad's gun. And tap, tapping her on the face with it's like, <laughs> you got you got to go. Oh boy, she know she stepped into fucking deliverance. Where did I see that bitch in there? <laughs> it's like you, you got to go, you, you know? know. And and she she let me tell you, I don't think she even got fully dressed. She was just like, it was just, it was like out the door. You got to go. Ah, oh, like holy shit, dude, she's gone. Um, 
And then I remember I, I, I busted in the bathroom while you were taking a shower, and I was like, "Where's the strong box, you motherfucker?" And you're like, "Put it away." <laughs> hey, what are you Put doing, dude? You need to kill somebody. I remember Frankie's face, man. He was he like, even, dude, he I didn't expect you to fucking pull the guns out, man. <laughs> like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> Yeah, You're from you Yorkville. Know. These things happen. Yeah, this shit happens. It's, 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 we don't talk about guns. Dad. We don't just talk. We don't talk about them. We put, we just pull them out. You know? Yeah, that that was fun time. I mean, to me, the band really like came to its own though. Once, I mean, it, Frank, you know, you know, once Frank Collins was gone, we got you know, big Frank, Frank Villalona. Yeah, yeah. And and Frank brought in, brought in a whole other musical aspect of things that we, yeah, you know, man. that we just dove into head first uh -huh. and when we dove into it I was just like wow I was like he's coming from a whole different fucking exactly. other other angle and shit like that and I don't know and I, it just made it, it just it, it, it's like like you're saying like um, different people came true at different times and it, it brought it to another level and it brought it to another level yeah you know and, and everybody just learned something new and you know, Frankie came in, you know, and we, we learned how you can be melodic and heavy. You know yeah. what I mean? And develop your own sound. And it's like, it, it was, you know, it, it, it was just right. Yeah. It fit, you know? It fit at that time. You know, it was like, I remember, like, it, it's just how easy it started to become just to, even from a singer standpoint to write lyrics. It was just like, I could hear the music and it was just like, the lyrics would just pop right in my head, you know? Quick question. What was your favorite Without a Cause song to do live? To do live? Yeah. Uh, okay, I'd have to say uh, My my Hell. All right. It's close to the end. It's got it. That's got a, a, that's a special song with me and you. Yeah. I wrote that on a bad ass trip. Real bad ass trip. Could not get out of it. So, so Lenny's trying to calm me down. No matter what I can do, I can't calm down. You know, so he's like, Throws me a notebook and a pen. He's like, let's write a song, you know? <laughs> hey, I, I, yeah. I saw an opportunity. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, like, ooh, untapped potential, let's go. So I'm thinking of, a, in, my, in my head as I'm, tri as, as I'm tripping, I'm thinking of a pendulum going back and forth, you know? And then he starts playing. <laughs> So I love playing that live because I could swing the microphone back and forth like a pendulum. It would just you know, remind me of that. Like that's that and uh, what's your point? You know, oh, Frankie. Wow. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> you know that bend of the yeah, yeah, that little fucking harmonic pitch you used to do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, those those were fucking good songs. Um, what, how did you feel about like? During that time, like, what was your favorite places to play? Because we, unfortunately, we played CBs Gosh. once, and it was it wasn't a, a hardcore show; it was an audition showcase night. Yeah. We, you know, it was like the only way we we're gonna get a foot in the door. And at that time, when we played, there really wasn't any hardcore shows happening anymore. No, it wasn't. That was during that that court. That, it was almost like it was dead for a while, you know. Yeah. Uh, and then we then after that, the only other time was the benefit, Frankie. Yeah. But uh, it's Bond Street, Bond Street, by like far. I love Bond Street Cafe, and. Uh, Bond Street and then the Wetlands. I, I even Obsessions I like. The other thing I didn't like about Obsessions and it was like kind of this is actually the Jewish kids with the Adolf Hitler tattoos. <laughs> New Jersey is oh, weird. Man, dude. New Jersey is weird. That's all. We're I'm talking gonna like dudes named Horowitz with like. You know, like, like, uh, like you know, swastika with tattoos right or, or with lightning bolts. Actual just like... Hitler, I mean Hitler himself. <laughs> you know, it's like Hitler and Blondie. You know what I mean? <laughs> the, the, yeah, they, they, <laughs> Northern New Jersey was definitely an odd place at that time. Yes. Um really was. Yes, and but, then we brought Bobby up there to, to he would start the show, like you know, introduce us, and then we come back and and they, they were all and everybody we come back a month later and everybody's like uh, uh, like uh, you know a, a, a white kid who thinks he's black and it was like crazy man it was like it was insane man yeah that, like that the hip hop oh the, well the hip hop thing it. that definitely started like influencing all throughout but I think yeah. um. The weird thing about sessions, and it was a lot of places at that time, was the yeah. pre-sale ticket thing. Yes, yes. They used yes. to be like, and and I remember. You had to earn that that Domino's pizza. Or whatever yeah, what you would cast. dude. And it I remember was, you negotiating on the phone. All right, well we're, we're gonna get three pizza pies. Okay. 
<laughs> they weren't giving money. And, and two two liters of Pepsi. They were not yes. giving money. Let me tell you, they they refused to give fucking money. And same thing with freaking Studio One. They had a thing where that they, was a good place. To that was a good too. place. But at the time, they the opening bands they wanted New Jersey bands to open. So yeah. we had, we had Kevin Gill who was at the time sort yes. of doing stuff for us, like. Ma you know, he was kind of our manager because we had a lot of Fugazi managers. We'll get into that in a second. Oh yeah. Um, but used to have this thing where he wouldn't want New uh, New York bands to open the bills. He'd only want New Jersey bands. So he was like, oh, you know, two of the guys were from like Bayonne or whatever. Totally yeah. fucking line. The rest are from New York. You know, and you know, we did okay on some of those shows. But that was also at the time that was also here you still had there were certain places like Dan Tateria for instance oh god I'm, I, I'm gonna tell the story too oh, oh, tell um, <laughs> Dan, we we Dan Tateria, we played Dan like like once like two or three times I don't remember one time was with Kevin Gill's band stick figure and, and the showcase yeah in the showcase and we we go uh, <laughs> we go to pick up the tickets right and the lady is the blonde hair uh, chick. chick. She was, she was, oh, she was a schema. I remember she was all fucked up. She's like, she's uh, all, yeah, she was all strung out on blow, man. She, yeah, and she, she, and <laughs> trying she, to get money out of it. But jump. the funny thing was, the funny thing was, uh, she, she handed the tickets. She's like, and we, it was like a week before the show, and I'm like, how am I gonna get rid of tickets in a week? Yeah. You know, and she's like, oh, don't worry about it. You know, s s sell what you can. So I remember, then they were, oh, she's like, oh, just, you know, you guys can hang out. You know, you know, yes, do whatever. And, pr and promote the show. Yeah, and so drink I, tickets. <laughs> and meanwhile, all all that meant was Al took all the drink. I didn't drink at the time. Well, I was woo wooed out, man. I was drinking the woo woos. And I just night. remember yeah. fucking Al had it was me, you, Ray Maloon, and Dave. Yeah. Uh, and we're sitting there, you know, you're fucking, you're rapping a, I don't know who the fuck you're rapping it, just like I I blacked I blacked out and I came through and I was around the corner. And and she was she was uh, giving me a blowjob down in the basement area of some tenement building, and I came that's, through and I'm like, that, "Who are a, you? That, what are you doing? Get off!" <laughs> and yeah, I ran but back there, in, and she was... runs after me. So I took the fire extinguisher off the wall and I tried to spray her with it, and then. I, I remember waking up in your house. Well, you, no, well, here's the thing: <laughs> you, you sprayed her with the fire extinguisher. Then you took the fire extinguisher and tossed it down the stairs towards the bathroom. Oh, and no. that's when me and Ray Maloon grabbed and like, "It's time to go." Yeah. Because you know, now the bouncers are alive and like, <laughs> all right, where, where are they? You know, he winds up puking in the middle of First Avenue. He's like, "Dave, I'm gonna throw up." Dave stops the car in the middle of traffic. <laughs> Blah. Fucking get him upstairs to my place. Next thing you know, he he goes to. You know, he's like, I'm gonna be sick. He runs to the bathroom, goes to lean over, leans over too far. You crack your head off the fucking your off the uh, toilet bowl. In all these years, I thought I got all these years. In my mind, I <laughs> I got thrown down a flight of steps by no. a bunch of bouncers. No, you you, and, and you wound look, up cracking your head. It was much head. more glamorous than that. No, I cracked it on no, the, the toilet truth, bowl. No, the truth the truth is actually you, <laughs> you you cracked your own head off the toilet bowl, and then next thing I know. I just see the blood gushing into the bowl. I fill up the tub, I grab you, I let you bleed for a while because I gotta let the tub yeah. fill up. Yeah. So I, you know, the tub gets about this high, I grab him by the back of his shirt, and start dunking him. You know, like, wake up, wake yeah. up. And fucking now the water's turning red in the tub, the water's turning red oh, in the bowl. God. There's a trail of blood between the two. I'm like, oh my God, this fucking, this is a mess. This is an ultra fucking mess. Yeah, uh, the, the good old times. Good old times, man. And then that, even that show, that show was memorable, man. Remember the big, the big, the big guy that was in the front row? He must have been about like six foot four, like 300 pounds, and he went nuts and he banged into the sheetrock on the column. Yeah. Remember yeah, that? That, that was a. We that, did pretty good at that show, man. Yeah, no. We, it was a showcase, and at that time, like, you know. They were looking at like you know, still I think hair metals. This is before grunge even broke. This no, no, this girl, is right? this is during the grunge era. Oh, it is. This okay. is during the grunge era. But you still had that weird hair metals holding on, and yeah. grunge is coming in, and it was just it was a weird fucking time. You know, '92 was like a weird year for this stuff. You know, because yeah. there was a, a transition going on between like, you know, what MTV was feeding you at the time, which was a lot of a lot of guys and like tight pants and high top sneakers yeah you know and makeup to fucking guys and flannels and the yeah. unwashed look yeah you know yeah. and yeah. slowly and surely things were changing you know and it's nuts dude that was a really interesting time to be uh 
to be into music. Yeah, and then, and then and at that at that point, it's like, isn't that the point? That's when when, when was the in effect our uh, first Super Bowl was the in effect Super Bowl the one they did the documentary on the sick of it all when I took front return. Oh, the '91 thing. That yeah, was our, that was our first Super Bowl. Yeah, that we all went to. Yeah, yeah, that we all went to, which is great. If you gotta have a first uh, Super yeah, no, Bowl, yeah. that was like an awesome one to go to. You yeah, know? Vision played that night. Uh, Little played? biscuits. Yeah, that, I'm trying to remember the opening bands. Oh, right, I think Rest in Pieces played. Yes, yes. It, it was it was a pretty interesting bill. You know, it was wild too. Yeah, it was. Um, man. We, had, you know, we, and, and by then we we had, you know, we had developed a really a, a cool crew. You know what I mean? It yeah. was like, you know, it was like, you know, me, you, Ray. Uh, we had uh, John Zito, Richie O'Brien. You know what I mean? Brian Roman. You know, but yeah, it was like, you know, it was it was a, it was a nice mixture of Yorkville and Bronx and Brooklyn. You know yeah. what I mean? And which was cool. Which was kind of like it exposed us to like. The whole Brooklyn thing that was going on. And yeah. And we started playing shows out in Brooklyn, you know? Yeah, we started playing with like bands like Confusion. Yeah. And like Judgment Day and Lament. Exactly, and, yeah. Lament. I love Lament. You know, John Zito's yeah. old band. Yes. Visions of Mortality. Visions of Mortality, VOM, yes. Uh, yes. Yeah, that was. I remember going, I remember, uh, I remember my first BYB party on the beach in Mill Basin, man. And it was just so much fun, man. It had like everything set up on the beach, drums. Amps, guitars, and that's when uh, Jane's Addiction's uh, first album came out. You know, and everybody just started playing. Coming on a mountain. Yeah, Richie they... O'Brien got drunk with nuts, broke something in the house. It was just like, it was just classic, you know? Richie O'Brien used to get drunk and break a lot of stuff, though. Yeah. That was, that yeah. was, that was, but you know what? He was the, wa but he was the Watson of our era, man. That, he could dance yeah. any style on the floor. Yeah. Like, you remember the, the great Amnesty International shows? The, the, yeah, remember, remember the one those. with the the one with uh Karis one, yeah the one with Karis one and Sigur yeah, yeah, yeah. when the ones from EPMD was standing up front and they didn't want nobody to step on their sneakers. Yeah, I've spoken about that show to a couple people and that that was a wild show. That, that was, was not... they grabbed the kid that stage dove and they they slammed him on the floor and it, it cracked his head open. So Pete Kyle was trying to explain to them, listen, this is how we get down. Yeah, and then after that is when they did that to the kid and then. Uh, he broke into uh, push us too far, gotta fight back. And I remember Richie just launching forward, and the whole crowd, they had to drag these two hip hop dudes out to the back, man. They were gonna get killed, man. <laughs> that was a rough show. Like everyone came together. Oh, that was a real rough show. That, Pace was there. Pace had a gun hidden outside the place under a car. I mean, it was a, that was an insane, maybe well, rest of the nothing, show. To, to be honest with you, a lot of those, a lot of those old. Marquee shows were extremely violent. Oh yeah, look, you know, and, and it wasn't so much minus, the show. That's where minus got stabbed that time. Yeah, and it wasn't yeah. so much even in the show. Just walking on the just block. Walking it was, down. It was, a, it was a pretty bad. Yeah, the, it was like Chelsea, right? Be yeah. six to the Chelsea. Well, it was Chelsea. Then you had and you had certain kitchen. guys fucking looking for trouble outside. You had certain guys looking for trouble inside. Yeah. It was just like you got to watch your fucking ass. Yeah, right. shows, yo, shows be, were like, yeah, that's when shows started getting really dangerous, too. I man. mean, got, like, it wasn't uncommon for guys to just bring weapons. Yes, yes. You know, and it wasn't so much... The, it wasn't socks, so, the socks with the batteries I mean, in it. And it or just, <laughs> you know, mace. Mace yes. was another... Yeah. Because I remember a lot of shows where people would throw fucking mace. You'd be burned, You know, and yeah. you'd be fucking running to the bathroom or like, oh... Someone just shot off me. It was uh -oh. like warfare. And I mean like and then going to Lamar's got to the point where it was like the Warriors. It was really <laughs> like like that show, that Angel Death show, that Slay show was like the most dangerous fucking show to get from the train to Lamar's was insane, man. Well, you know what it is? You had guys like, yeah, God, God guys, bless the soul, you had guys like Saab outside. No, no, Archie. It was Archie. Oh, Archie. Archie, Archie yeah, right, hey, you got, got an extra ticket? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I got both this thing. You cracked Steve over the head with a bottle that night. I remember. It was just insane. They, they were all wandering around on Angel Dust just like terrorizing, yeah. you know? It was just insane, man. Yeah, it, it was a fucking crazy fucking time. All right, so um, we got hooked up. Like, I remember things really started changing for us when we got like, we played that Metal Madness show up in the Bronx. Yeah. You know, because it was like, wow, there's actually a scene up here. Yeah, you know, and I was like, we, and we actually had a little merch. We had this. <laughs> we had we had a oh, shirt. Table. We had a shirt, and we had the. Uh, I think we had the seven inch at that seven time. Inch. I remember when you came when you when you came back from downtown with with, with the box with the shirts. You yeah, that? I was like, I was like, and dude, the, 
those, those shirts were fucking. Yeah, they're my tribal. My yeah. My first tattoo in the South Bronx in uh, some. Uh, some. Some back, place somewhere. Some backwater, some, some backwater uh, <laughs> flat. <laughs> <laughs> hey, fucking, you live and you learn. Um, yeah. But yeah, I remember like after like that Metal Madness show, like from that point on, we kind of hooking into Bond Street and Bond Street. I like Bond Street because, you know, a lot of there's some people who go, oh, Nicky Camp is trying to rip people. I was like, yeah, but at the same time, it was fun to play. It was man. fun, Come and on, we you know what? Yeah, if we were getting, you know what I mean? I mean, if we, if it, if it covered the course of getting down there, it was about yeah. playing and, and yeah, and I mean, and he would give you a couple of dollars. It wasn't yeah, like he wasn't totally was, fucking you, but the thing I liked about oh, Bond Street was there was. <laughs> There was always like a, uh, there was always shows there on Saturday. I would wind up going down there for a lot of fucking different shows because I'm like, there's a scene down here. Yeah. Because at yes. the time there was nothing happening at CB's. That they started slowly doing shows again, but nobody was banging on our door for a show. Yeah, that's where I remember. That's where I met Todd Hamilton. Yeah. Down, down there. And he, yeah. uh, and you know, we wound up like I said. Bond Street became a scene, you know, it, yeah. it really, it really did it, for a lot of us, you know, and a lot of people, it tends to get, you know, pushed off to the side, like, like, whatever, you know, you, you guys weren't trying hard enough. I'm like, dude, nobody was really what, booking. What do you mean? Those shows were great, though. No, I know, but there's people who were playing other shows who thought that, you know, oh, what we're doing at Bond Street is bullshit. But this is also before, like, this is also before, I mean, Wetlands would have shows too, but they weren't having a lot of shows. Once a month, maybe, you know, they would have a show if you were lucky. And we got hooked up with like, like two yeah. or three of those shows. Yeah, at that time they were riding off to Spin Doctor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, Wetlands was a good club though. Oh, one of the best. Man. You know, and we wound up playing Bond Street probably about like nine times, and yeah. it, it was, it was a great little fucking spot because, like I said, it just everyone gravitated down there that, that was to me that was our cbs that was our little place it was you know what i mean yeah. and it was where kind of like so many bands came out of that gathering yeah around bond street oh yeah there's there's a few of us who you know are still around still playing and shit and you know that's yeah, still the, come from that by, but malone and then they went over to you know, billy club uh, yeah sandwich. billy club you know those guys yeah. all those guys remember bond street you know fucking Todd Hamilton came yes. out of Bond Street. The Indecision Kids yes. all came out of Bond Street. You know, Close Call, which turned into District yes. Nine, came out of yes. Bond Street. Yes. You know, but yeah, it was it was just a fun little place. You know, the shows would end early, so you could terrorize the fucking East Village. Oh man, we used to have we used to, we used to break night down there, man. I yeah. remember us going down on a Friday night, man, and like like tripping balls on acid and like. You know, like ending up in a Soho and people throwing water out the window at us just making too much, much noise. noise. But know? the village was different. You would walk around with a beer all, all night long and no one would bust your balls. Yeah. You know, fucking no one gave a fuck about smoking weed in the street. No. You know, I mean, no. it was, New York was a completely different animal. No, you know, you try any of that now, you're spending a night at least. No, we caught the, I think we caught the last of it, man. Yeah. That was it. You know, and I, then it changed. Then you guys, you guys had um, Coney Island High after that. Coney, and then I think, and yeah, and CB, that, the CB thing finally blew back then open it blew again. Blew back open again. You know, and yeah. you know, and then there were a lot of other clubs that came out right after, you know, right after the demise of Bond Street. Then you had Coney open. CB started doing shows. Then mm -hmm. a whole a ton of places started doing shows. You know, you know, now hardcore bands were playing Irving Plaza again. Hardcore yeah. bands were playing Tramps. It was like it, it, it really, you know. Mid '90s, it really started blowing the fuck up. Up again, yeah. It blew. It, it got huge for a minute there, where a band with just like an independent record out could sell out fucking, you know, tramps. Yeah, I know. You know, Which, 900 yeah. to 1,000 people in a fucking room, and you're like, holy shit, this is really happening. Yeah. Um, around that same time with the Bond Street era, though, we also there was a guy who, I guess, wanted to manage us. You know, this guy Shane, and I mean, we had also had some real like. Shady guys. I mean, with the exception of maybe Kevin Gill, because you know Kevin did try his hardest. No, Kevin did. Kevin you know, Ke really Kevin did hard. believe in the band. Kevin and Barbara, man. Ke Kevin and Barbara, Barbara both too, yeah. believed, and you know, this was this is before Kevin really took over the American side of SFT. It was yeah. still run out of Germany. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, Kevin Gill tried his hardest, but in the beginning, I remember you know, like Ray Maloon had that one kid Jay who used to come down, yeah. who was like. He was like, Ray's like, yeah, this is our manager. And I'm like, well, what's he doing? 
Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, like, what is he doing? It's like, all right, what is he buying you symbols and sticks? All right, yeah. I got it. You know, yeah. like that's your manager. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Then you brought then yeah. you brought around this guy Tony from the block. He was like, he's like, oh, he's got connections. Like, what does he do? He's like, he's a stagehand. He's like, what does he do? Push around crates? It's like, yeah, yeah. And I remember yeah. he gave us actually money to make some demos. And we went up throwing the demos out at people. He's like, you're giving away your profits. Like, dude, it's you got to get, the, gotta music get the music out, out there and then come to the shows. Yeah, it's really like if they like it, they'll it. come back for more. If not, exactly. And that guy didn't really last long. And then Kevin yeah. Gill kind of came in and did, did do a lot of good shit for us. Yeah. You know, he actually did help us get that. Seven inch out. Um, yeah, I remember us talking to Billy from uh, Biohazard too. He was gonna, he wanted to do the managing thing, but then Biohazard blew the hell up, and they ended up. Yeah, I think I, I don't. I have no idea what that was about. I think I think Shane actually brought him around because yes, yes, we yeah. we started recording our uh, our demo at Fastlane, right? And this is the time Shane was like, "Oh, I want to manage you guys." He made us sign a contract. Look, I actually <laughs> ran into it not that long ago going through papers, and it was such a bullshit like deal, like like, you know, I'm getting 15%, and when you guys get signed, I get like 25%. I'm just like, Jesus Christ, what what the fuck were we thinking? Yeah, no. You know, I mean, we were not. Me, you kid. know, this I learned a lot of what not to do, you know, because of guys like that, you know. Yeah, and sure. um, he uh, he never got us any shows. You know, his whole thing, I think, well, he wanted to try to get the band signed so he can, like, clean up on his 25%. Yeah. You know, yeah. and on, on yeah, all... Yeah, he had his own thing going, it, uranium. Didn't he have uranium... Uh, well, he, he still had Law & Order going at the time. Oh, okay. He, saw, oh, he, he was a right. singer for Law & Order, yeah, that, yeah. that glam yeah, band. Glam band, yeah. And then he went into the industrial type thing. But I just remember, I always felt like he was scamming us because we, we got done with the demo, and I, we were all pretty pleased with what we did. And he was like, I don't like the snare sound. Okay, well, let's try to mix it a different way. Let's, you know, throw something on it. It's like, dude, it's just a demo. He actually made us go in there and punch in all the, you know, punch in every snare hit with a new snare drum. And it took hours. And I think it was just so he could- He could get paid. He could get paid to like, yeah. Do whatever it is that he was doing. Yeah, and it was, he was getting off the books. He, it was another hour in the bucket for him. You yeah, know? He, you know. Fuck him, you know. I mean, I did run into him during the mid '90s or whatever, and you know, he, he was like totally different haircut, short eyeliner, like the whole like like goth the, look. Goth, the goth yeah. thing, yeah. And it was like really, I was like, it's like this guy changes like the wind blows, like oh exactly, fuck. yeah. He was looking for anything to like, you know, like to stay relevant. I guess was the word. You know? Exactly. Instead of just going out, going out with, with a little dignity, this is what you know. I grew up. This is what I was. Yeah, you would change with the wind. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, around this, now, it was you know as '94 progressed, you also got deeper into your own issues. Yeah. You man, know, and it, 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 and it's not and, real bad, and uh, you know, part of that, you know, was also part of the the last recording. It took me. The, the vocals were very hard on me. My voice was shot from snorting heroin and cocaine, and it was this bad, you know? I mean, it's, it had seemed so, growing up, it had seemed so glamorous to me because all my role models got high, you know? But, you know, they were also criminals. And, you know, yeah. They, you, I didn't see the bad side of it with them, you know? They had the, the hot girlfriends and, you know, they were the Yorkville tough guys and, you know, blah, blah, blah. Then when I got into the music, you know, some of my idols, you know, did junk and, you know, I don't know what came over me, but uh, I remember the night I did my first bag. I was coming back from Anita's house in the Bronx and I got off on the sixth train on 110th Street and I remember the, the, the older gentleman as he handed me the $10 bag telling me, don't die on me, kid. We'll be back for more. And I'm like, yeah, right. And uh, I remember walking down to the water and doing my first. I thought I got ripped off, first of all, because I was used to snowing cocaine, you would get so much. And you know, heroin, you get such a tiny amount in the bag. And I'm like, oh man, I think I got beat. And then I did it. And it was just like pixie dust. All my problems went away. I looked over the water and it just it looked so beautiful to me. You know? I think the best way to explain the beginning 
of it was you can be sitting in your house and it's burning down, but everything's okay. It's all right. Fire's not gonna burn me. Yeah. I'll be just fine. You know? Well, and what led you to going that route? I mean, what? I mean, because I mean, we all we all party to a degree. Everyone we knew partied, but to go to that step where you're like, oh, I'm gonna go from sniff and blow to doing dope. How does you, that? Uh, what, what's you know, what's that transition? Well, curiosity, man. Curiosity. I mean, uh, you know, I mean, you know, like, you know, I, I mean, I, I idolized Lee Wei. You know what I mean? Eddie was like a mentor yeah. to me. You know, I mean, uh, and uh, you know, he, he was the biggest advocate for me not to do it. You know, I mean, he had many a talks with me. But, you know what I mean? What are you doing? You know what I mean? You're supposed to learn from my mistakes, not. You know, see it as a glamorous thing, you know. And uh, it's just, you know, curiosity killed the cat. I have an addi addictive personality, you know. It's a genetic thing. You open up that door, you know, it's very hard to shut it. And that's just what happened, you know. It starts with started with the pot, and you know. And uh, I mean, come on, I mean, you, I mean, you saw off just even before the door. I went like going back to the drinking at Nancy Terry. I'd have to take everything to the lip, to the next as far level. as it can go, you know. Uh, remember the remember the party up in the Bronx with the angel dust when I almost walked through the glass door. <laughs> Do that know? a couple times. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I, I mean, we we used to have a, a slogan, me me and my guys, where it would be like. We did the drugs, the drugs didn't do us. Exactly. The dr yeah, the dr the and unfortunately, the drugs did you. They did it. You know, and they did me. They like did me. And, then, and it's, you know, and the sad thing is, it's like, you know, time machines, you can't go back and undo what you did, you know. But uh, you just have to learn from it, you know. Some people it takes longer than others, some people don't make it, some people die. Yeah. You know? I remember, because I remember when. You really were. There was a point where you wanted to get clean, and there were a couple of points where you wanted to get clean. But the one I remember is we went uptown, you and me, and yeah. got methadone. Yeah, I remember. And that. I remember Christian. everyone started bugging out because they thought I was an undercover cop. Yeah, yeah. I, was, I was wearing a blue windbreaker. Yeah, it was 105 Street. <laughs> yeah, you went, tried it. You tried it. You tried and, and everything. To help more or less, locked man. you in my house for a week while yeah. you while you tried the kick. Yeah. You know, and you know. But uh, it, that's it's. It, it just it, 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 it wasn't. It, it was the beginning. It's unfortunately with a drug like heroin, you're gonna put in a pension with it. Yeah. If you pick it up and by some divine intervention, you don't stop within the first six months of it. You're gonna put in a pen enough time to, you know, where you would have gotten a pension if you put that time into a union or job. I mean, it's like. And if you if you're lucky enough to survive it, you know it, the, the, everything. Well, first of all, the, the allure and the beauty of it goes away very quickly. You know, the day you wake up and you realize that you have a gorilla on your back, and if you don't feed him a shitload of bananas, he's gonna fucking rip your fucking limbs off one by one. Cause that's what it feels like. You know. And then you're just that's chased. the day you're in trouble. That's the day you're in trouble. You know, and then it's, then it's, it's just chasing after that. It, yeah, it's, it's chasing and feeding. It's feeding. It's, maintain, it's just maintaining. It's just maintaining. You know, and, uh, you know, and it's sad. You know, I, it's so much opportunity. You know, that I uh, fucked up. But, you know, it's you know, it's still got still got a whole other half of a uh, life to live. You know, yeah, or the half of a story to tell. That's basically what, you know, that's where I'm at right now, you know. So you know, I'm at peace, but it's like, I, I look around now and the kids are getting younger and younger. And it's like insane, you know. I, got, I, I see some of the kids coming to where I get my therapy and it's like, uh, are you lost? Like, are you, what are you doing here, you know? You know, it's just starting on the rock, they're like, 16, 17 years old, starting going into the medicine cabinet, taking out one of mom's Roxy's, and the next thing you know, they're shooting heroin. Eight months later, it's like insane. You know, it hasn't been this bad since the 70s, you know, it's like yeah. insane. And well, it's the same, it's, you know, the newer generation insane. doesn't have, you know, they, 
it's all fun and games, it's all party time until your body physically demands it. Yeah. And then when the, you know, like they say, when the money runs out, with, especially these pills are not cheap. You no, know, if you're buying street, a, if you're they're, going, not, they're not at all, man. I know. And that's why kids go to the dope. I know. It's a lot. I know a lot of people that that stay job. They get a Roxy prescription. You know, they get three, four grand a month off that prescription. It's it's insane. Yeah. It's, and it's more expensive than the heroin. Heroin's cheap. Yeah. You know, I think it's cheaper now than it's been. In, it's ever been. Yeah. You know, it's ever been. Than it's ever been. You know, and it, those pills, it's it's the sickness is even worse than the heroin. I mean, the only reason the kids make the change is because of the economical situation. Yeah. You know, I mean, I learned that when I had my leg ripped off. Oof. And I, yeah, I mean, you know, the original OCs. I mean, it's just, a, you know, no joke. But, uh, yeah, that's that's when it started with me. Like, you know, I was never happy with my vocals on that, on those songs. I love those songs dearly, and I love them live, but I was never happy with my vocals on it, you know. You know, I always, uh, Wish I could have redone those, you know. Yeah. But that was part of that was part of the problem too. On that, on that, you know. And Shane knew what was going on. Each took full advantage. All right. Well, we had to change locations because some people don't know how to shut the fuck up while we're filming. But whatever. This is New York. People. Yeah. Fuck you, you cunt. Um. Sorry for the interruption, folks. So, yeah, dude. I mean, towards the end. Of the without a cost thing, I mean, it was evident that it was. We, we all knew, but we were all like, all right, he's maintaining it. It's not, you know, you know, it's, I know you were trying to get help at the same time, trying to do the right thing, but slow and surely, then you had, you know, people creeping into the situation, like, who the fuck's this guy that he's hanging out with? Who the fuck's this guy he's hanging out with? You know, and, you know, and, and you know, unfortunately, it, it, it did affect you know your performance it, it affect your vocals and yeah. and I mean the bet you know regardless of what no, I remember it, I, mean, I remember I remember Mongo coming up to me after the show and he said to me he said Alex what are you doing he said don't you realize he said do you realize what you're gonna give up like what you're doing to yourself you know yeah and he, and he said it to me with care and, you know, well, we, and he like he cared he was like what are you doing man like, you know what I mean like and then at that point, I was just like, I defeated myself. Well, it, it, it just started, like I said, it started getting to the point where, you know, started missing rehearsals, started, you know, and, and, and mind you, there was never ever a plan like, oh, we're going to get rid of Al, get rid of Armando, because Armando was actually the third dude who tried out, you know, for yeah. when the band switched over. You know, it was like, it was like there was only so much shit you know, I mean, no, it, it, yeah, it was only so much shit someone could take. There's only so much you could take. You know, and, 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 and we you had. You know what I had a, like my father would tell me, uh, you know, you got a lot more suffering than dope, he used to tell me back then, you know. And, uh, you know, you just became a totally different animal after that anyway, you know what I mean? Yeah, you know, I mean. You just went on to, you just went on, you just went on, became Fahrenheit, which you just, you just were your own, you know yeah. what I mean? So, you know, it, 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 it sucks because uh, the thing was, yeah, and this is. This is God's honest truth. I didn't really start smoking weed till after all this because I was kind of the responsible guy in the band. Yeah. And you know, I it, it felt like sometimes like I got to watch what Al's doing. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's like here, why don't you stay yeah, over at my house nice. tonight instead of going hang out with your boy? Yeah. You know, and and it, it's fucked up because I've seen people go down the path, you know, since then. And there's that part of me that is like. You know, as fucked up as this is gonna say, because I did put a lot of work into trying to help you, where I was just like, I I'm done with fucking trying yeah, to help yeah, people. Yeah, it's yeah, just like, yeah, I have to, I have yeah. to live, I unfortunately have to live yeah. my own life. And, exactly. And, you know, and I've been there for friends, you know, I've gotten into a couple of people's asses at work who are all fucked up, you know, because yeah, they're epidemic. almost gonna kill, you know. That's an epidemic at itself. It, it is, it is. It's scary because there's, young, there's a lot of young kids you know, we just had a, a kid, an apprentice in my business who OD'd. He was part, out with his boys, he's partying, he started fucking going under, and instead of taking him to the hospital, they drove him to his lawn, threw him out on the lawn, and left. Oh, great, great and guys. If they would have yeah. just took him to the fucking hospital, he would have been okay. He would have been okay. They would have yeah. given him a shot. Going back about you know? uh, six, 
six years ago, 580 rented out Conifer Park Rehab for three months straight. They had the rehab booked. It was all 580 guys. So yeah. That's like how bad it was at one point. Like, you know, and in all the locals, it was like that. Yeah, it's, it's a well, physical job. It's hard on your body. People yeah. get People injured. get banged up. They get banged up. They, they get, get banged pain up. painkillers. You know what I mean? It's, it's. And you know, some. I totally can see that. I hate to say yes. it. It's just like because mm -hmm. there's many a time I come home and the first thing I do is pour the Epsom salt in the tub yeah. and sit there for an hour like, oh my God, I'm fucking yeah. dying here. You know, and I mean, would and it be easier to take any elements too on yeah. top of it? Well, the, you get used to being outside. I mean, that, yeah. that's really what it comes down to. You get used to being outside all the time. Um, it's it's a you know it's a physical job just like any other construction job this one's a little more physical than most but it's a job mm. but I mean right now I'm definitely glad that you know you're doing your thing trying to maintain and it's yeah no these, these, are, these are going good man I'm getting, getting a grant to go back to school what are you going to school for well, I got I got a, I got a, I got a choice I'm gonna pay 28,000 for me to go to school so I got to pick when I want to go what I want to go for it no, I haven't decided yet. Trade stuff or? You know, I can go for trade stuff if I want. I can go for medical field. I can go for lobotomy or, you know. But are you allowed to go, because with your, your history? Yeah, I got no okay. record Because a lot of times like, that, that yeah. can trigger. Nah, that ain't going to trigger. That won't trigger to me. I mean, these people, they, they do it for a living. They know what works with people, what doesn't work yeah. with people, you know. But I have to decide what I want to go for, you know. I don't know yet, you know. I don't know yet, you know. I think I've, uh, I mean, I, I've, I've educated myself a lot in these years. I mean, I can sit with anybody and have a conversation on any topic, you know. That's the beauty of the internet. You, know, you ever think about going into say, counseling? Yes, yes, yes. And I think that would be the best one. That's the one recommended to me. Really I'm think about that, dude. I mean, you yeah. have the experience for it, and yeah. you know what? You've been on the highs and the lows. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what? You're, yeah. Just like all of us, we're not getting any younger. No. 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 no we're, all, we're all in our 40s year. now. Yeah. We're all in our fucking 40s now. Um, 45 this year, you know. I just turned 44. You know. You know, it just. Uh, and it's it's just it's tiring, you know. Like I've, you know, it's like I've. It's not like you know I didn't spend the last 20 something years just being fucked up. I. I build my life back up. Yeah. You know, and everything would be great. You know, and then things fall apart. And then you build it back up and then things fall apart. You know, it's like falling and every time you fall you learn a lesson, but now you got more regrets you gotta deal with, you know. And that's that, that's the way I, like this past year I started learning the value of therapy, you know, and working things out and trying to find out, you know, why I abused anything that I did in the, to begin with. What were the underlying reasons? What were my insecurities, you know? You know, what part of this was genetic? What part of this was, uh, you know, like I seen your interview with uh, Mike. Yeah. And uh, he said he's, uh, he said PTS, he's diagnosed PTSD. PTSD. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm diagnosed PTSD too, you know? That's the latest thing they like to run around, but it kind of makes sense when you go through a lot of childhood trauma, which a lot of us did in Yorkville. Yeah. I mean, it was, you know, it wasn't easy for our dads and our, our moms and everything coming up. And you know what I mean? When you're, you're, when you're the, the sons of blue collar workers, you know, you're going to you're gonna see some shit and you're going to go to some yeah. shit. My dad, my dad was that. a fucking raging alcoholic. Yeah, mine too. You know, I mean... Yeah. He, he, you saw him. At, you saw him at the meetings. Yeah, I, I, yeah. You saw him at the meetings. I, I, I'd be sitting there. You're, you're down on one side, and my dad on the other side. You know. You know, and the dad would pull up in his in his nice in his caddy. You know. Oh, the Buick. The Buick. The, the Buick. Buick. The Buick. It was yeah, the Buick. Pull up in the Buick. Oh, dude, he the was the workshop. Seventy nine. Yeah, he was. He was going to. Two he was so funny, man. When he saw me, when it was first time with my cash, he goes, he goes, which fire escape did you fall? <laughs> <laughs> That sounds like my dad, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. I, I had uh, coffee, like, I spit it out a little bit. <laughs> I mean, my dad, my dad was got really bad with the drinking, and what, what, why he stopped is he got hurt at work, and they, they, piss tested, and yeah. he he blew he blew dirty for fucking drugs and alcohol, 
you know, and I was like, and he, you know, the, the weed thing was never a big thing with my father. That's something he could have yeah. stopped. The alcohol, he was drinking a case of, a case a day after work, and you just like, and then it went to, onto the gallon and of a walk, car. And then walking around with guns. <laughs> yeah, guns. yeah. I, I, there, I've heard so many stories from guys, I, like, since I've been a 580, I, there's so many guys that I've, that I work with old timers who know my dad, knew my dad, and I'm hearing, I've heard a lot of stories prior to this. I'm hearing yeah. new stories that I was like, yeah. he really did what? Yeah. You know, God, God rest his soul, Walter Burns, right? Yeah. He, Walter Burns told me Walt. so many fucking great Molly. stories that I was like, he yeah. did that, and I actually went back and t asked my mother, I was like, did Dad do this? Like, oh yeah, he did do that, and he did this, and he did. That. I'm like, like, oh. what a wild motherfucker! Yeah, he wild, was. he was funny. Yeah, uh, Walter, Walter, Walter used to tell me, yeah, I, I, I used to go on burners with him. You, know, you guys get vacation checks. Oh like, yeah. You know, it's, it's a twenty thousand dollar, you know, run. <laughs> so yeah, I remember one he was telling me about when he was upstate. And he was like, they would know the anytime when they would hear the dancing blasting from the from the white dawn, they would be like, uh oh, there's trouble brewing with them white boys again, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean that's that's our neighborhood though, you know. We're just to kind of like I said, we're like basically German Irish fucking hooligans, yeah. you know, and. England has their soccer hill again? Yeah, well, like I said, Boston has Southie. We have Yorkville. Yeah. You know? And yeah. it's true. It's just a, it's just a, work, a two-fisted working class neighborhood. You know? And for okay. better or for worse, they can make a fucking movie out of what we fucking oh, went easily. through over here. Easily. Even the generation before us and the generation before that. Yeah, come on. You know? Dutch shows, Cagney. Come on, we got Cagneys from my neighborhood. I mean, you, you the Westies. No, well, yeah, we had some Westies. A lot of Westies yeah. from, from, from over here. Yeah, yeah, a lot of Westies came over. The fucking, the Shannons. Yeah, yeah. The Shannons yeah. fucking mm -hmm. were part of that whole little contingency. Yeah. Like I said, it just, again, it was, it was a two-fisted, no bullshit neighborhood. Gotta love it. I wouldn't trade, you know. No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade, trade it for the world. I wouldn't trade it for the world either, man. You know, it's it's sad now. It's like, you know, well, it's that, like I go down to see my mom. It's like, it's just not. It's not what we remember. I, I just well. came here the other day to see my mom and and the neighbor, you know, real quickly talk about how this neighborhood's changed and I don't know really if it's changed for the better. And this is just not our neighborhood. It's New York. Yeah. You see, you see it happening everywhere, and it's. it's don't get me wrong, I understand that things need to, you know, New York is always an evolving thing. Yes. It always will be an evolving thing. Some neighborhoods change slower than others, some neighborhoods change overnight. The problem is though, in the process of this last change that's happening, they're ripping the fucking... Character. The character and the soul. So The right heartbeat of, of New York has changed and is not well. No. You know, the, the what made New York New York, that attitude, yeah. is gone. It, 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 you know, it, it, the beautiful thing about New York is like you don't have to leave the country to, to visit another country. You know, when Queens. I go to Sheepshead Bay, yeah. to Brighton, I go to, and go to Russian markets. I'm in Russia. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, when I used to go up to Sienita and Pelham Bay, I was in Italy. You know, yeah. it was it, it, no matter. Then I lived up in uh, the little Ireland section of Woodlawn for a while. Oh Jesus! You know, yeah. it, which was beautiful. It, it's like. You no, know, but Yorkville, it's like, it's, yeah, you're right, it's lost its, it's, it's, lost, it's, so it's lost its charm, you yeah, know, it has, it, yeah. whatever charm that was, mm -hmm. you know, and I think it was like that old school, everyone knew everyone, but at the yes. same time, you know, we also tend to have, you know, that's also a bad thing in a way, because, you know, you get the wash women. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, that, man, that was quicker than cell phones, man, it was always a window percher that, by yeah. the time you got home, your mother knew everything that you did. Yeah. You know, everyone knew everything, and it was just like, Jesus Christ, this fucking, the pipeline travels fast around here. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. like, hey, did you hear what so-and-so's kid did? I was like, I was just with him five minutes ago. Five minutes How the fuck ago, did you man. find this out? Shit. You know? Yeah, I mean, it, 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 was, it, it was crazy, man. Was so, crazy. other than that, so, what, just to jump back to music, what have you been listening to lately? No, I just, I put on, I listen to, like, a lot of 90s type you know, on Pandora, and you know, Spotify is where I got, I, I, like, I listen to all different stuff, man. You know, um, like my buddies who turned me on last week, I was on, uh, what's the name of that drummer? 
like one of the best jazz drummers you learn from. Learn from uh, Buddy Rich. That Buddy Rich, he moved to South Africa. Oh, uh, 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 he was in Cream. Uh, Ginger Baker. Ginger Baker. Yeah, I've been on a, everything Ginger Baker uh, trip lately, man. Amazing, amazing, man. Amazing. Oh yeah, dude. Man. Funny know. story about that. Just to, to bring things back around. My father told me a story about him and my uh, Uncle Turkey. They would actually, they used to go to shows down at the Fillmore East, right? Yeah, yeah. And they they got backstage and hung out with Ginger Baker and they were like, yeah, we started snorting fucking crank with Ginger Baker. Yeah. It was great. I'm like, I'm thinking, I know, you know, I heard the story when I was like 15. I'm thinking, yeah. you know, this is, I'm, I'm hearing about drug stories uh, yeah. from my father like snorting fucking, basically meth at that time. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's like, like, Wild motherfucker. Yeah, that, that, does, that, that makes me think of a funny story with me and Eddie. Uh, Leeway was open enough for Motorhead at the Ritz. So Eddie pulls me up. I went up to the front and he looks out at the curtain and he goes, Come on. So I'm going back to their little dressing room in the back as we're walking by. He points to the door. So peeking in, there's Lemmy sitting at the table with his bottle of liquor and it was yeah. like something out of Spinal Tap, a plate. Who the bloody cunts at the door, you know? Fucking ran. <laughs> oh my god. So, uh, any uh, any closing words? Uh, just, uh, you know, it was, uh, it was great taking us, uh, it was great seeing you. Great, oh, it was great seeing you. Taking this trip down memory lane, you know? And, uh, you know, hopefully, uh, when you're done with this project, we get together, man. And, do our, do our swan song. Anything's possible. <laughs> All right, brother. All right, brother.